In September 2010, the BC government enacted the Immediate Roadside Prohibition Program for impaired drivers. Its sole goal was to get impaired drivers off the road and save lives. It worked. In its first 17 months, the IRP program reduced impaired collision fatalities by 44%, which means 71 more people got home safely to their families. In November 2011, the Supreme Court of BC ruled that parts of the IRP program were unconstitutional and that changes had to be made to protect the rights of drivers. On June 15, 2012, these changes will come into force. So what are these changes, and how does it affect the driver? At roadside, drivers now have a legal right to refute the first breath test result by providing a second breath sample into a different approved screening device. Of the two samples, the lowest blood alcohol content result prevails. There are now twice the number of grounds for review that protect the rights of the driver to ensure a fair and consistent review process. Police procedures at roadside have also been revised, mostly relating to forms and paperwork to ensure greater accuracy and consistency. These changes go above and beyond recommendations made by the BC Supreme Court to ensure driver rights. So what hasn't changed? Penalties for driving impaired remain the same. Three-day driving prohibition and impound for blowing a warn. Blood alcohol content 0.05 to 0.08. Seven-day and 30-day prohibitions and impounds for subsequent offenses, plus additional fees and sanctions. 90-day driving prohibition and 30-day impound, plus additional fees and sanctions for blowing a fail. Blood alcohol content of 0.08 and higher. A 90-day IRP is the alternative to a criminal charge, which lands an impaired driver, if convicted, hefty fines, mandatory rehabilitation programs, a criminal record, making it difficult to travel internationally, and even jail time. For details on what's changed and what hasn't, including review grounds, penalties, and fines, check out our website at www.pssg.gov.bc.ca slash osmv. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at RoadSafetyBC, to keep up to date on the latest changes to BC's road safety initiatives, raise a concern, or ask us questions. Thanks for watching.